Hey guys, this is Dustin with Geek Station. Sorry it's been a few weeks since I uploaded a video. I've had some some crazy stuff going on with my work. So um, today I'm going to be starting a new game though, Ultimate General Civil War. Um, I am definitely a huge history buff. I actually got my bachelor's degree in history. So I got any kind of game that's based on history, like war games, strategy games, like I've always been a huge fan of. And this one is really fun, if a little bit hardcore. Uh, I played it a little bit and it, I got my butt pretty well handed to me, but we'll see if I have some better luck while recording here. But this is a, a Civil War game that lets you start from the very beginning of the war and play a, a campaign that goes all the way up to the 1865. You can play as either the Union or the Confederacy. Uh, for this playthrough, I think I'm going to be the Union. I'm probably more of a Confederate sympathizer in real life, but I like a lot of the Union's kind of quirky and slightly terrible generals so we'll go with the union to start off with here so when you start off your campaign you have several choices to make um, that kind of lets you decide what your background was before you you uh, entered the civil war so I think I'm going to go with um, Logistics is pretty useful. But I think I'm going to go with Strategist. And you also get to get to kind of say what your experience was in the Mexican American War, since a lot of the, the generals from the Civil War were involved in that war as well. Grant, Lee, quite a few of them, McClellan. So let's go with let's go with infantry. Strateg being a strategist already gave me a bonus to training and going with infantry gives me a further bonus, so I should be in pretty good shape there. And then um, economy is extremely useful because you get a certain amount of money between battles um, that you will spend on upgrading your troops, uh, reinforcing your troops, like buying new upgraded rifles and so forth. But army organization is extremely key from what little I've played of this. But then again, politics is pretty nice too. Uh, I guess you can't really go too wrong with any of these choices, but I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with army, and then I'll stick with the union this time. And don't make too much fun of me. I'm gonna play on the newbie setting here because from what I've played, this game is quite difficult. Maybe I'll boost up the difficulty if I end up doing. You know, too well. So let's go. Let's say my name is Geek Station Dustin. Oh man, I got a nice training bonus there. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. So this first battle is based on the, the Battle of Philippi. Uh, this was a this was actually the first organized action of the Civil War. Uh, this in real life was basically just a skirmish where some Union soldiers approached the West Virginian town of Philippi. The Confederates in the town put up a brief resistance and then quickly fled. It was played up pretty big in the northern press, 
Um, it was like just this epic victory, but really it was quite inconsequential. But it did kind of lead to the press pushing for McClellan and some of the early generals um, to push for like a quick race to Richmond. Like really it kind of, even though it was like such an inconsequential battle, it did actually have a important role in history in that it led to the Union uh, rushing headlong into the first battle of Bull Run. So they say they're... According to this, the garrison is uh, 3,000 soldiers or less. So we have to capture this town before rebel reinforcements arrive via railroad. Okay, so you start off with a certain small token force. Uh, from what I, I, the first time I, I played this, I lost pretty handily. Uh, but one thing, just to you know, f for the for full disclosure, I did find out there were some rebel troops up here. So, with that knowledge, let's see if I can do a little bit better this time. So you have um, a skirmisher unit. Skirmishers were um, kind of lightly kind of light infantry that could go move faster than the normal infantry and kind of scout out the enemy position. They were used pretty extensively during the war. Um, so I've got two units of skirmishers and an infantry brigade led by Zook. And then here's my general unit. Um, you can see that it has like a certain radius that like, kind of like represents like his like area of influence and basically it just gives from what I understand it gives some kind of bonuses to any troops that are within that radius so let's move our troops up here our skirmishers I'm sure will run into the enemy before my main infantry brigade here so you do have a certain amount of time you Honestly, I'm not sure what the time limit is on this mission. It's it's meant to be kind of a tutorial, but it was honestly kind of tough. I mean, I I played my Sid Meier's Gettysburg back in the day and still got my my butt kicked. So definitely not a trivial tutorial mission. So we'll continue moving up by infantry brigade. As you can see, we have a couple of rebel skirmishers. I mean, you can kind of see the type of division or type of unit it is based on this icon. This rifle represents an infantry brigade. This little dude represents a skirmisher. So let's try to move my skirmishers up to see if we can kind of en entrap these guys, try to prevent them from fleeing into the city. The skirmishers really should be no match for my infantry, but they will still be kind of an annoying threat. The first game I played of this, I tried to just mark, march down this valley and they were just taking pot shots at my units the whole time. So this approach is definitely going better than that. Let's see if we can flank these guys. One of the keys to warfare from this era was the, the idea of turning the enemy's flank. Um, if you can, as you can see, this enemy was already kind of flanked and they're falling back. But Alright, so here comes the rest of my forces. We have a cavalry unit. Cavalry was used for scouting as well as you know, making charges around the enemy flank for attacking you know, enemy artillery positions. And then we also have some art, um, s some artillery as well as another infantry brigade. So we'll bring all these guys up near this town. Okay, so this shows the time remaining and 
Looks like I have five hours to capture Philippi, which consists of both this town and then this is really the challenge. Um, crossing these bridges here is not easy. The enemy is fairly well fortified. So I think what I actually want to do with my artillery, I want to give it some open ground. Um, artillery generally performs better when it's not in like wooded areas, but infantry, um, of course, does better in that kind of terrain. You, know, you definitely want to get your infantry in cover as much as possible. So this is a, a supply wagon. Um, you can see it has like a little circle around it too. That shows like the range that it will resupply units. Uh, you can see the unit supply, which is represented by this white bar. So there's going to be some entrenched infantry here. This is going to be a little bit tricky to dig out. You don't really want to use your cavalry for just like frontal assaults. And cavalry during the Civil War wasn't as powerful as it was like in the Napoleonic era, but it was still pretty key. Okay, I'm going to. This is going to be risky. So, the, um, great. That's not good. Okay, my artillery is getting flanked. Uh, probably should have ordered it there. Well, until I had cleared out this infantry. So, as you can see, I'm definitely a noob at this game. Uh, let's order a charge. So, let's see, um, <laughs> wrong button, charge, okay, that's what I was looking for. So, once these guys are in melee range, I'm hoping my numerical super superiority will let me clear them out pretty quickly. Okay, and they are fleeing, which is excellent. Alright, let's get our infantry set up and some cover here. Skirmishers? What are they doing here? They're going after my supply wagon. Ah, this is terrible. They actually captured my supply wagon. That is really bad, but I caught it. I got it back, though. So I thought all those guys fled into the city. So I'm going to send my own skirmishers and cavalry after these guys. So I'm going to move up my artillery. Um, your artillery performs better at close range. Okay, let's see if we can get over this bridge. And as my guys are out in the open, you can see the cover percentage. These guys have pretty decent cover, but. Okay, they are too exhausted to do another charge. I'm just going to fall them back. Their morale is really 
getting pretty low. So these guys charged out in the open now where they're getting shot by my artillery at, at point blank range. At this range, artillery can use what's called canister fire, which is uh, much more devastating than the um, kind of uh, round shot that they would have to use at, at longer ranges. So at this close range, these guys are just getting ripped to shreds, which is nice. Up here, my guys are slowly fighting against these guys. Um, unfortunately, the Confederates have an entrenched, entrenched position. Um, it actually may have behooved me to combine all of my forces here and not split them like I did, but... Okay, these guys are fresh, so I'm going to order them to make a charge. Hopefully my other infantry and artillery here can weaken this enemy. So making a charge across like a narrow bridge like that is risky, as you can see. Um, racking up enormous casualties in a pretty short period here, but I think my casualties might actually be worse. Uh, where's my general? Okay, let's get him up here. Okay, well, they're routing. If, it, if your troops' morale gets too low, they just will run for the hills, basically. So on the upside, though, it looks like the enemy did retreat from this position. So my assault was definitely not a complete loss. See if my cavalry can clear up these guys. Okay, so let's send my. Let's see if we can work our way towards this enemy unit and attack their flank. These guys are slowly, after routing, their morale is slowly starting to come back up. And then over here, um, it looks like these skirmishers are not doing so hot against my cavalry. So they sh will probably surrender here eventually. Let's keep working our way forward here. So these guys have recovered somewhat morale-wise. Let's move up some skirmishers. Now like I said, historically this was not a pitched battle like this. Uh, the Confederates just kind of fled, like as soon as it appeared there was any organized Union resistance. So this, you know, in the game this battle is definitely kind of an embellishment, but it wouldn't make for a very interesting tutorial to have the enemy just immediately run away.
keep these skirmishers here. We will move up our cavalry now. Let's see if we can get them. Okay, so we've got plenty of time. There's three hours left. We are making steady progress. So as you can see, this unit's supply is pretty low. I'm going to move up my supply wagon to replenish him. Let's see if my cavalry can perform a flanking attack on these guys. Let's do a double charge. Oh wow, my cavalry alone was able to get them to rout. So now I can move my other infantry, infantry brigade across this bridge and start attacking the enemy from the flank and from the rear. Cavalry can help break up this artillery. Attacking this enemy artillery. Well, what are you doing? Okay, let's charge this artillery. Okay, it is now routing, so this objective is now in our hands. It will just be a matter of holding the, the town and uh, fall, okay, fall back, fall back. All right. So we'll start moving up our infantry. Uh, let's try to get them in a little bit of cover if possible. Looks like we'll be able to capture an enemy supply wagon here. And let's move up our art artillery. Let's actually send them over here. This area is a little bit elevated, which is generally helpful for your artillery. Anytime you capture an objective, there's a brief period of it being contested. So in seven minutes, although not real-time minutes, um, I should be able to finish the battle here.
Okay, so we won that battle, uh, at least the first part of it. Okay, so it looks like there is going to be a counterattack and an armored train coming down the rails. Basically a 19th century panzer. It could be tricky to deal with. We do have some more reinforcements coming in, including a strong, uh, including strong artillery batteries. They should arrive in about an hour, so they will be very key to move up here as quickly as possible. But for let's pause, kind of stop time for a second. Let's move, um, well, this is probably an okay position. We will just move it around a little bit. I think we might want to try to plug this gap with our skirmishers. They won't be super effective, but it's better than nothing. Um, the unfortunate thing is the guys here in the center just have no cover. It's tempting to move them back a little bit, but it will create kind of a gap that could... Uh, it's going to be really dangerous to leave that big of a gap. What? Well... Just hope that there is not too strong of a Confederate center here. Are these skirmishers up on the flanks. Let's move our artillery or our cavalry over here. So it looks like your casualties kind of carry over from one battle to the next. So I think I did reasonably well in that last one. I mean, definitely still a new, but... did at least carry the day and managed to avoid my entire army getting destroyed. I think we'll move these guys back just a little bit. I think with these skirmishers here, they shouldn't be too terrible of a gap. So yeah, that makes a big difference cover-wise. These guys have 74% cover, 37%. Okay, so we see the first Confederate troops here. Some skirmishers, of course. Okay. Let's move on. my cavalry back. Okay, so it looks like these guys are charging. Wow. Let's have my artillery join, or my cavalry join the melee. This doesn't look too good. I've only got 200 men in that brigade, so... Hopefully the cavalry can turn the tide. Some point-blank canister shot will help as well. Alright, great. More moving... more rebels on their way. Alright. Looks like we held. Thank goodness for my cavalry there. There's no way I would have survived that charge without him. Okay, so we've got some more units on the map here. Not a minute too soon. Let's move these guys, we'll say here. 
We'll tweak it as they get closer. I feel like my general skills are really needed most here. My right flank is fairly strong, but So they're making a lot of really risky charges. Alright. Definitely an aggressive Confederate general here. Looks like we held the line once again. Oh man. This is a lot of troops. I don't know how I'm going to hold out here. Send my cavalry down here now. Looks like my skirmishers are gonna break. Just fall, just fall, but fall back. that armored train they warned us of. So my artillery targeted. It looks like the Confederates are continuing to route on their their charges, but my numbers are continuing to dwindle. Reinforcements need to get here fast. We definitely need to reinforce this right flank. Oh, jeez. This armored train is just tearing up my troops. Okay, these guys are just... Alright, well, I was going to tell them to fall back, but they are already routing. They just got absolutely mangled by this armored train here. Jesus. to break through to one of my artillery pieces. I am trying to move up some infantry to counter this, but I'm afraid the damage will already have been done. So let's just fall these guys back. They're just getting torn to shreds by this armored train.
try to keep my guys in the city for the extra cover. So we are at least holding the town, although casualties have been pretty unfortunate. Why am I? What are these guys? Confederate train is damaged and withdrawing. That's excellent. So I think we should be able to definitely pull this one off. That was definitely the most difficult threat that they had. a pretty massive attack on my flank. I'm going to fall these, have these guys fall back. Try to get my artillery out of there. Artillery units. So they're continuing to make some progress on my right flank. See if we can use my cavalry to help 
dislodge the enemies from this position. It's definitely not ideal to have an enemy brigade so close to the city like that. Over here, we look pretty solid. Over here, the enemies definitely outnumbered. So it looks like the enemy's sending up their own cavalry to match mine. Things look pretty safe over here. I'm going to move up one of my other brigades to assist on this front. There's just 17 more minutes in the bottle. I, I should definitely be able to hold the city at this point. Despite some late setbacks over here. So again, this is definitely an embellishment of the actual battle. There wasn't this counterattack or an armored trade or anything like that. Okay, so things are looking pretty stable. Troops did take much higher losses than I would have liked, but should be yep there's the finish so let's look at the final casualty count I took a total of uh, a little over 2,000 casualties he took over 3,000 we accomplished all our goals several of our units had the most most kills there picked up a few weapons off the battleground Rescued, I believe, refers to weapons that your own troops uh, lost that you managed to recover and captured our enemy uh, as enemy equipment. So we managed to clear the tutorial. We got the campaign medal. And that is probably all for now. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I will be back with another Civil War video soon. I hope you enjoyed.